Hello everyone, in this video we will do the daily current affairs analysis of 21st January 2022. So the first topic which we will discuss is details of the rapid antigen tests. So what exactly are antigens? Antigens are foreign chemicals that cause the body's immune system to react. What is the COVID-19 rapid antigen detection test? It's a test that looks for antigens on or within the SARS-CoV-2 virus in swapped nasal samples. It is a point-of-care test that is used to provide a diagnostic result rapidly outside of a traditional laboratory setting. What is the difference between a rapid antigen detection test and an RT-PCR test? The rapid antigen detection test, like RT-PCR, aims to identify the virus rather than the body's antibodies. The most fundamental distinction between the two is the passage of time. The time it takes to perform an RT-PCR test is between 2 and 5 hours not including the time it takes to transfer the sample. The maximum time for evaluating a positive or negative test in a fast antigen detection test is 30 minutes. What are the limitations of the results of an antigen test? These tests are highly specific for the virus, but they lack the sensitivity of molecular PCR assays. This means that positive antigen test findings are quite accurate, but false negatives are more common. Therefore, negative results do not rule out infection. Negative antigen test results may need to be validated with a PCR test before treatment options are made or to prevent the virus from spreading due to a false negative. The sample is only stable for one hour after it is collected in the extraction buffer. As a result, the antigen test must be performed in the healthcare environment where the sample was collected. Source of this news is The Hindu. So the next topic in news is about the draft national air sports policy. So uh, about the air uh, draft national air sports policy, aerobatics, aeromodeling, ballooning, drones, gliding, hang uh, gliding, paragliding and skydiving are all included in the draft NASP 2022. According to the draft NASP, an Air Sports Federation of India will be constituted as the apex regulating body. The day-to-day -day operations will be handled by the associations for each air sport. The Paragliding Association of India, for example, will oversee sports under its jurisdiction. According to the proposed policy, air sports associations are responsible to ASFI for regulatory monitoring as well as guaranteeing safe, affordable, accessible, pleasurable, and sustainable conduct of their respective air sport. According to ASFI, India would be represented at the Federation Aeronautique International FAI and other international venues connected to air sports. The FAI is the world's regulating body for air sports with headquarters in Losune, Switzerland. According to the proposed NASP, all competitions in India will be run according to the FAI's criteria. So significance, the new effort, according to the ministry, will let Indians participate in and succeed in global air sporting competitions. Air sports will be encouraged to be included in the curriculum of schools, colleges and universities. According to the Atnirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, domestic design, development and manufacturing of air sports equipment will be encouraged. If an air sports association fails to enforce safety requirements, the ASFI may take disciplinary action against it, including financial penalties, suspension or dismissal. Source of this news is The Hindu. The next topic in news is details of the Comptroller and Auditor General of India. So background of CAG. CAG is constituted as an independent office in Chapter 5 of Part 5 of the Indian Constitution. Articles 148 to 151 of the Indian Constitution define the CAG. He is the Chief of the Indian Audit and Accounts Department. He is the Guardian of the Public Purse and is in charge of the entire financial system of the country, both at the national and state levels. He 
it is his obligation to preserve the Indian constitution and the laws of parliament in the sphere of financial administration, term of office and appointment. The CAG is appointed by the President of India through a warrant signed and sealed by him. He will be president for six years or until he becomes 65, whichever comes first. Duties, the Consolidated Fund of India, as well as the Consolidated Fund of each state and UT, with a Legislative Assembly, are audited by the CAG. Every spending from India's Contingency Fund and Public Account, as well as each state's Contingency Fund and Public Account, is audited by the CAG. The CAG audits all trading, manufacturing, profit and loss accounts, balance sheets, and other subsidiary accounts, maintained by the central government and state governments. It also audits the receipts and expenditures of all bodies and authorities significantly financed from central or state income, government companies and other corporations and bodies as required by linked laws. His certification is definitive as, as he determines and certifies the net earnings of any tax or duty reports. He delivers his audit reports on the centers and state finances to the president and governor who subsequently deliver them to both chambers of parliament and state legislatures respectively. He submits three audit reports to the president, one on appropriation accounts, one on finance accounts and one on public undertakings, CAG and PSE. He is a counselor, companion and philosopher of the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament, in addition to its statutory, regulatory and compliance audits, the CAG performs a performance and efficiency audit to analyze the executive's wisdom and economy in order to uncover instances of improper expenditure and waste of public monies. The independence of the CAG is guaranteed by the following constitutional provisions. The he is disqualified for any future appointments in the Indian government or in any state after resigning from his office. His pay and other working conditions are set by the parliament. His pay is on par with that of a Supreme Court judge. His remuneration as well as his rights to leave for of absence, pension and retirement age cannot be amended after his appointment. The Consolidated Fund of India is in charge of the CAG's offices, administrative costs, which include all salary, allowances and pensions for individuals who work there. As a result, they are exempt from parliamentary scrutiny. Source of this news is The Hindu. Next topic in news is about the Bully by app. So it is a prelim specific topic. So according to report, the web page was created on January 1st and had a number of photos of Muslim women, including journalists, social workers, students and celebrities, along with insulting remarks. Bully Bai's complaint was filed by a woman who works for an internet news platform. The term Bully Bai itself appears disrespectful and the content of this website or portal uh, is clearly aimed at insulting Muslim women as the derogatory term bully is used exclusively for Muslim women and the entire website appears to have been designed with the intent of embarrassing and insulting Muslim women, he, she wrote in her complaint. She said the portal used her doctored photo in an inappropriate, offensive and blatantly obscene manner. The photo uploads on the Bully by app were identical to those on the Sully Deals app in July of last year. The Bully by app functioned similarly to Sully Deals. When the box was opened, a Muslim woman's face was displayed as bully by at random. Source of this news is uh, the Hindu. Next topic in news is about the chief economic advisor. So it is a prelim specific topic. So Indian government's chief economic advisor gives recommendations on money, business, commerce and the economy. The CEA reports directly to the Ministry of Finance. The CEA is in charge of the economic division of the Department of Economic Affairs. The economic division researches economic trends in the US, uh, in India and around the world. Economic research and studies on economic policy and management are conducted by it. It provides research-based evidence to the Indian government. The Office of the Economic Advisor is a subsidiary of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. The source of this news is The Hindu. So thanks a lot. For watching the analysis video. Have a nice day.